fire went out. Oh yeah, it'll here. Watch, we'll give it a little. Uh, just need a little air. Nice. Yeah, there you just go. Just do that again, cause now the fire's in the background. Yeah, yeah. Just like sure. black. Before. For sure, yeah. <laughs> My name's uh, Konzo, and I'm one of the owner operators here at Bar Sugo. Konzo is a nickname. It's a combination of Konzo from the Muppets and Connor. That became uh, Konzo, and it's uh, just a, a light teasing from friends in the neighborhood, and uh, that's where the nickname Konzo came from. That's pretty cool that you own it too. Like, yeah, I, I, you, tr <laughs> you can't hide from it. People are shouting at me from across the street, so you kind of got to live with it. Learn to love it. Lots of different tattoos. I uh, started getting them pretty young. They, uh, they're two faces. One of them I really like, and the other one I don't like. Just a bad luck and a, and a broken heart. And then Save Seed, my mom's got a farm. Handmade was me being a young chef and thinking it was pretty cool that I got to work with my hands. Um, so just a collection of things over, over the years. I think I'm still learning how to be a chef. Um, I started cooking when I was a about 17, uh, I got a dishwashing job and that uh, turned into a cooking job pretty quickly. 41 now, or yeah, 41 yesterday. So uh, uh, yeah, I've uh, been doing it for 23, 24 years. The Italian Canadian food was going well at Sugo and we decided uh, we wanted to close down our first restaurant here, the Emerson, and turn it into uh, more of an Italian focused menu. And I somehow was able to convince my business partners to let us build a pizzeria, even though we had, hadn't made any pizza before. So there was uh, yeah, a lot of faith and support there. And uh, some of the things we did along the way probably didn't make sense. Originally, we were making 18-inch pizzas out of a wood-fired oven. You don't typically see 18-inch pizzas coming out of a wood oven. Usually, the larger pizzas are done in deck ovens and wood ovens are cranking out smaller Napoli style pizzas. So we were doing silly things like that when we first opened. We've shrunk down to a 14 inch pie now, still pretty big, but a more reasonable size to cook out of a wood oven. So we started making pizza in 2020, but we weren't really sure what we were doing yet. It's taken about three years to figure it out, but we're, uh, we're happy with it now, yeah. Today we're gonna make about a yeah, today we're going to make it. It's actually about 360 today. Day before, we put on what's called a poolish. It's a starter. We put equal parts water, flour into a container. We add some yeast to that and we let it sit out for about 18 hours. I don't know if you can smell it. It smells a bit like cider, very yeasty smell to it. That gives us some flavor and structure and sort of gives our dough a little bit of a head start. Our pizza dough is made with predominantly organic hard flour from Canada. And then we use a little bit of Canadian zero zero flour as well. Olive oil, salt, yeast, water, and love. A little bit of sugar too. Add the starter, mix some more. Get it onto the bench, portion it, weigh it out, and then, uh, and then we'll uh, boil it, get it into these white trays, and it'll start going upstairs. Okay. So, you got your knife? Yeah. So when we uh, were designing the pizzeria, one of the owners of Maker's Pizza, Shlomo, uh, was eating at Sugo and I was picking his brain a little bit and he was sort of telling me that one of the things he was struggling with was uh, the dough uh, making process and keeping that controlled. We sort of uh, listened to Shlomo's advice and built a room in the basement here that has some temperature control so we can control the humidity and temperature in there. In the summer, we can cool it down. In the winter, we can heat it up. And it just allows us to keep our product as consistent as we'd like. So 
So when I'm like pulling the dough in like that, I'm creating tension in the ball. And if I create t tension in the dough ball, as it proofs, the gas stays in. But if I like don't create this tension first, uh, the gases will blow bubbles through the top of the ball and make pizza a lot harder to make that rips more and causes all sorts of problems. So I'm trying to get that tension. He's doing the same thing, but he's doing it in his hands. I kind of just do it on the, the table here. If Larry was a younger junior cook, I'd tell him to do it my way, but you can't, you can't really, you can't, yeah, you can't bark up at this guy too much. So you kind of just gotta let him, let him do it his way. It goes into the fridge to go take a nice four day long nap. Four days minimum. The pizza we're serving today is a uh, eight day ferment. Yesterday we were serving a nine day ferment and uh, we weren't able to do that until we started using organic flour. But once we made the, the switch to Canadian organic flour, we found that we could go with much longer fermentation times in, in the fridge. And we find that with the longer ferment, it's easier to eat. All Canadian content, yeah. I mean, we have a great wheat producing nation. We have a lot of really good flour coming out of Canada. We try and use as much Canadian uh, ingredients as possible. We decided to go with a wood oven because of the romance with it and some of my favorite pizzerias had wood ovens. A company called Stove Master, a gentleman named Alex came in here, built the oven and uh, it's a dome oven. It's pretty big. I think it's probably one of the biggest wood ovens in the city and uh, we put a big brick facade in front of it. Often people show off the dome, you know, this is a brick building. We wanted the brick to blend with the rest of the building. While they were building the oven, they tore down the school I went to and uh, I was able to hop the fence, rip a bunch of bricks out of the I-beams while they were demoing it. And uh, we put a bunch of bricks from our high school into the wall behind me. With the idea to put other pizzerias names on our menu was basically uh, tipping our hat or paying homage in, in cooking, in art, in sports. Uh, we're all standing on the shoulders of giants. We're all inspired by other people who have been here before us. So we wanted to acknowledge some of our favorite spots and put it on our menu. The Little Manila was one of our top serving pizzas. I don't know if people are, uh, are uh, getting funny with pineapple, but uh, Janess, she had a lot to do with that pizza. She's from the Philippines originally. She's from Manila and she's little like me. So that pizza became the Little Manila. Probably my favorite pizza. It's similar to Hawaiian pizza, but it's got a little more pork on it. So it's the Little Manila. The Uncle Scotty pizza is one of our white based pizzas. It's got mascarpone cheese, basil pesto, buffalo mozzarella, zucchini, virgin mozzarella curd, whipped ricotta cheese. It's finished with fresh basil, granite panano cheese. A little bit of olive oil and some fresh cracked black pepper. Uncle Scotty is uh, one of my best friends, someone I'm, uh, I owe a lot to. He taught me how to cook and was able to sort of uh, give me a start in the restaurant business. What makes our pizza so good is quality ingredients and love. We really care about what we're doing. We want to execute it at a high level and we use the best ingredients we can possibly get. I'm from Toronto, we're in Toronto. I don't think we should be always tipping our hat to other cities. I think we should be proud of our pizza scene here. And so I'm pretty happy to say that it's a Toronto style pizza. I'm definitely inspired by New York pizza and pizza elsewhere in the States. And they, obviously it came from Italy originally, but uh, I don't wave anyone else's flag. I'm, I'm about my city. You know, I love where I'm from. I'm very proud of Toronto. So I'm happy to say I'm in Toronto. I'm from Toronto and I'm making Toronto food.
What do I like about my job? Uh, I get paid to have fun with people I love and uh, cook food, which I also love to do. Future of Sugo is world domination. We're gonna be on grocery store shelves. We're gonna open more Sugos in Toronto, probably in other cities eventually. So look out, we're coming for you. Uh, this is just the beginning and uh, you're gonna see lots more of Sugo in the future. I'd like to thank everyone that supported us, all the customers that come here, and uh, all the people in our community, even the people that can't afford to eat Sugo, the people we feed in community kitchens. Thank you for enjoying our food. Thank you for being part of our community. And uh, we'd, we'd just like to thank everyone that works here, everyone that's ever come through these doors. We wouldn't be here without you. You make this restaurant great, and we, uh, we love and respect everything you've allowed us to do. And it didn't have a ring, it didn't have the same ring. Like no, no group of girls ever said, I wanna go to Konzo's. They, they wanna go eat at Bar Sugo.